right? We're on the 2.9 set where we're being asked, given factored form of a quadratic, identify the vertex, intercepts, and vertical stretch. It's basically having us go through multiple forms of quadratics and see which form is the most efficient to find these features. But so when it's already factored, it's nicely easy to go ahead and get those x-intercepts. Remember that by zero product property, we know that if a factor is a negative two, that my x-intercept is a positive two, right? And so if my factor is a positive six, we know that the x-intercept is just a negative six. So quickly looking at this factored form, we know we can quickly get the x-intercepts from that. Now next we wanna get the vertex, and I know that my vertex is gonna go straight down the middle of my parabola. And so imagine if I'm touching here at two zero and here at negative six zero, that I would know that the middle is right in between those two points. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total distance. So I just go over four, one, two, three, four. So it's probably gonna be right here through negative two the middle of those two intercepts. Well, we have a formula to take the average of those roots, and the formula goes like this. Once I have the x-intercepts, I can just add them together and divide by two. So negative six plus two, or two plus negative six, gives me negative four over two. And so I know that the x of my vertex goes right through negative two. Then for me to get the y of that vertex, I would just plug in the negative two and simplify. So negative two minus two is gonna be a negative four. And then negative two plus six is gonna be a positive four. Well, four times four times four is 64. And there's a negative in there. So there's the Y value of my vertex or the HK, that's the K value of my vertex. Then for the Y intercept, I can do the same thing with the original equation plugging in zero. So I would say four times zero minus two and then zero plus six, which is four times negative two times six. And so my Y intercept, is gonna be four times two is eight, eight times six is 48, and then that's also negative. So my y-intercept is gonna be zero comma negative 48. Finally, the stretch of the graph is just this number out here in front, it's just four. So let's look to see what took us a long time on those and what was easy on those. Let's move this intercept over, zero negative 48. Okay, <clears throat> the other thing I just want to point out, a quick way to do the intercept, or get rid of all this work, uh, the y-intercept that is, is that didn't we notice that when this zeroes out and this zeroes out, I end up just multiplying these three numbers. So four times two is eight and eight times six is 48. So I can now see a quick way of using this form. So here we go, um, x-intercepts, we got those pretty quick. This one's just gonna give me negative two zero, positive six zero. Uh, Y-intercept, I know I can just multiply. Negative six times negative six is gonna be positive 36. Stretch is just three from right here. Uh, finally, the vertex, we're gonna do the average of the roots. So negative two plus six is, oops divided by two is four divided by two. So my X is gonna be two. And then plugging a two in up here to get the Y value and we're done. So I get negative three times four times negative four. So that's 12 times four is 48, positive 48 because of the signs, okay? 
Uh, next one, y and in, uh, x intercepts negative five zero. Remember, it's the opposite signs of the factors. Y intercept is just that end value. So seven times five is thirty five. Stretch is one in this case. Vertex. We're going to average those roots. Negative five plus negative seven is negative 12 divided by two is negative six. That's my line of symmetry. That's the beginning of my vertex. And then plugging in a negative six gives me negative one times one. There we are. All right. Uh, next one. Notice that the x-intercepts come out to the same number this time. It means we've got a parabola that only touches once at 7, 0. And it's a stretch of a half, so it's going to be a wider upwards graph, something like that. So sometimes we only have one x-intercept because it's a perfect square, and you get the same answer twice, 7 and 7. Okay, next is your stretch is a half. Uh, your y-intercept is going to be negative times negative 7 makes 49. Don't forget we have to multiply this half. So this is going to turn into 49 halves. Negative times negative is positive, positive 49 times a half. Vertex is the average of the roots. Well, there's only one root. Oh, it means it is my vertex in this case. My only x-intercept has to be also the vertex of the graph. See if that makes sense for you. Here we've got an eight and a negative four. Uh, half of eight times four, 32, half of 32 is 16. Let's look at the signs there. Negative times negative is positive, times positive is positive. My stretch is a half, and my vertex is the average of those roots. So we go eight plus negative four, is 4 is 2. Plug in a 2 to that equation. We go 2 minus 8 and 2 plus 4. That's negative 6 times 6. That's negative 36 times a half. Negative times negative is positive 18. Finally, oh, ooh, these are some big numbers here. Uh, the x intercepts are positive 29, zero, 25, 0 and positive nine zero. Y-intercept is 25 times nine. And then times three fifths. So it's really gonna be 45 times three, 135. Yuck. Stretch is three fifths. And then average of the roots, nine plus 25 over two gives me 34 over two, gives me 17. And then 17 minus 25, 17 minus nine is negative eight times eight or negative 64 times 3 fifths and 192 fifths. Ew. I am definitely going to check the answer key on that one tomorrow because that is some nasty numbers and I want to double check myself on all that arithmetic. Okay. Pause the video. Last three. See how much you can do on your own before you do these. All right. Let's see how you did. Uh, x-intercepts 3 comma 0 and negative 3 comma 0. y-intercept is going to be negative 9 times 3 fourths. It's going to be negative 27 fourths. Stretch is 3 fourths. Vertex is an average of the roots. So picture 3 in one direction, 3 in the other, and how that's going to really just zero out. But let's go do it just to double check. Um, Negative 3 plus 3 over 2 is 0 over 2 is 0. Do you see how that comes about? And then we plug in 0. 
uh, 0 minus 3 and 0 plus 3 gives me negative 9. And then negative 9 times 3 fourths is negative 27 fourths. Well, that's weird. Why um, did I get the same answer for the y-intercept and the vertex? Because the vertex happens to go picture that's like the middle of your graph through the y-axis. All right, good job on that one. All right, next one shows a stretch of 1, and our x-intercepts are 5, 0, and negative 5, 0. Picture again if it goes the same distance in both directions, how my vertex is going to zero out again, and it's just going to go up or down from there. So here I've got 5 times 5 is 25 times this negative 1. So negative 25 times negative 1 is positive 25. And then the y-intercept when I plug in 0, 0 minus 5, 0 plus 5, is going to give me negative 25 times negative 1. Oh, there it is again, where my vertex and my y-intercept are the same value. Right down the middle of my graph is that y-axis. Finally, my x-intercepts of this one are the same number. Again, picture that my graph touches only one place at that one. Um, the vertex is the x-intercept. And then your y-intercept is when x is 0. So we get 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times that stretch of 2 thirds is 200 thirds. Ew. And then finally, your stretch is just 2 thirds. OK. Um, hopefully, you think that factored form is not too bad to get most of those features. It really isn't.